Okay, good uh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Paul's Monday Market Update for uh, Monday, 22nd of uh, April, 2024. Um, I hope you are all well. I hope you've had a, a good weekend. I uh, hope that uh, hope that you're ready for uh, an interesting week ahead, which I think is what we're uh, uh, what we're expecting, and certainly we are kind of living in there. Uh, interesting times uh, for uh, trading wise and um, as always uh, for those of you joining us today uh, here live in the room it'd be really appreciated if you can just confirm that you can uh, see the slides and you can hear my voice make sure the technology is working before we uh, kick off into the uh, to the main meat of our uh, session Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as always you're uh, very welcome here just remember that you're always responsible for your own trading decisions. <coughs> Uh, if you want to hear a bit more trading education, as always, I do a uh, Monday Market Matters webinar for active trades at two o'clock every uh, every Monday London time. Um, uh, and you're uh, welcome to join us for that. Today's session, the education piece will be about trading intraday reversals. So uh, you're very welcome to join us. You can do so either on their website or use that QR code to, uh, to take you there. All right, let's... Uh, talk about our main stuff All right so uh, where are we what are we doing i appreciate that if you're a uh, if you're new to trading or if you're new to our sessions this might look a little bit overwhelming or intimidating but uh you know a couple of weeks of following us and you'll 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 get the gist pretty quickly it's just the work i do on a weekend for uh, what i call my stand just to give me an idea to identify where is the strength trend and momentum uh, primarily within fx markets but also within indices and commodities markets uh, once i've got an idea of that that helps me uh, allocate my my time, energy, and resources for the week ahead. So, um, where are we, and what is this telling us? Uh, week seventeen of the uh, of the year. Okay, twenty second of April. Where's the strength? Where's the weakness? No surprise. Okay, dollar remains top dog there. Okay, um, there we have it there, and you can see that it's been flirting with it, hasn't it, for uh, the last couple of weeks? Not really a, uh, a surprise there. Um, what we have seen is that um, uh, you know Kiwi dollar, which has been sort of flirting with the uh, the bottom of the barrel anyway for uh, most of the uh, last five six weeks, is back into the uh, kind of bottom of the pile, uh, and Japanese yen sort of keeps uh, maintaining its position there. Some of you might have seen that uh, certainly on kind of things like dollar yen. Etc. We saw elements of um, um, what I think most people would see as intervention from the Bank of Japan last week. So uh, if you're trading yen, you just uh, basically want to uh, watch it out for that. But if we're always looking at right, well, what if any changes are we seeing? Uh, we can see uh, Aussie dollar fell away there. Okay, from being in the top of the pile, it kind of rolled over and gave it uh, gave itself up. Um, uh, we also saw uh, sterling. Okay, look at how sterling is kind of having been the top of the boy. Okay, for a couple of months uh, is now falling away. That shouldn't really be a shock. We've talked about that here on this call uh, and also on the uh, stage two call where we go into the uh, into the depths of the COP report and how that looks and how it's affecting certainly sterling. Um, most of us have been able to recognize that this has been coming. Sterling has been uh, weakening. Okay, as uh, as we start to see the likelihood that perhaps uh, perhaps the uh, uh, UK and Europe will be cutting interest rates before the uh, the Federal Reserve, which of course is done for sterling, but actually in a weird way has uh, has kind of just helped uh, euro basically um, move up into second place. Um, we will look at euro on the live chart at the moment because I think a little bit like sterling, um, this move by euro into the uh, top of the pile on the stand matrix is more to do with the weakness of others rather than the outlying uh, strength of the euro and i think once you look at the, uh, the the charts there you'll be able to to see that a little bit um you know a little bit wiser no surprise he west frank had a little bit of a bump everyone was a bit risk off last week after the uh after the uh um, events okay of the previous weekend and what we saw happen uh so was it thursday friday with retaliations etc um, uh, when I look at the uh, um, the kind of what's gone on since uh, since we opened yesterday, okay, sort of yesterday evening for here in the uh, in Europe, um, what we've seen is uh, you know kind of I'll be saying is actually a little bit of a kind of a, um, a risk on mentality there. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that um, there hasn't been any kind of tit for tat retaliation so far in the Middle East, uh, and also we signed that uh, huge big uh, defense aid bill there. Okay, the Americans, I think it's is it something like. 61 billion going to Ukraine, 61 billion of uh, taxpayers' money, all finding its way to Ukraine. I'm sure there'll be 
I'm sure there'll be lots of people all taking a little bit of a piece of um, of that. All right, but um, that is uh, that is good for uh, well, it's good for defence stocks, which we will look at in a moment. Um, uh, and I think that might be enough to to basically give uh, markets just a little bit of a bump for the next day or two because we go into. I think this week and next week, you know, we're into the real kind of the real blood and guts of the uh, of the earnings season. OK, and I think that will have a, a huge impact. We're going to look at um, the effect that basically uh, uh, some of the tech companies, OK, from uh, the last week, which we looked at. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Um, uh, and then we've got quite a few of the, well, defence companies, uh, tech companies. We've got uh, uh, Lockheed Martin and Raytheon on uh, what their uh, Tuesday of this week. Boeing, my old favourite, and General Dynamics on uh, Wednesday. Uh, and then I think we've got Meta, Facebook on Wednesday and uh, uh uh, Chevron on, on Friday, okay, oil in in a what is a glut of earnings, all right. So um, all of these are going to have a huge impact, I think, on the uh, in the markets. What we look certainly um, from my own stand model, all right. We've switched to now basically being sort of tactical sells on the uh, uh, on those kind of major indices. Um, I think we will see how how long that maintains. Okay, I, I'm I'm expecting a little bit of a kind of a, a bounce, even if it's just a dead cat bounce, all right. But we will look at that in a moment on the live charts to understand it. But certainly you can see that most of that is a uh, it, people are looking at kind of tactical shorts across most of those indices. Uh, oil has kind of come out of its buying environment. Um, gold and silver still remain in their buying environments, their strategic buying environments, but the price action today is kind of nudging away um, uh, uh, from that, and we'll we'll look at that in the moment. So um, we have a, a little bit of a risk on mentality into the start of the week, based upon the, the those two elements we talked about. How long that lasts for, though, you know, is, uh, well, that I think will a lot of that will depend upon some of these big uh, earnings data that comes out this week. I think that will have an impact to, to swing things for us. It might be the, the bounce the markets um, wants and traders are craving, uh, or, it, or, it pulls, or it takes the wind out of the sails. We shall see. Um, and looking at it, this is just the the, the heat map from uh, Friday's market, uh, and, and it's kind of mixed. Um, but you know, maybe you know, if you're looking at this, what we're looking at is, you know, the 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 boys who basically had you know uh, big losses. You know, it's a it's all it's kind of tech, all right. It's tech of uh, apart from uh, Amazon. Yeah, they're hearing consumer cyclical, but we were, everyone looks at them as tech. That's the uh, that's the that's the. Um, that's the, the 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 name of the game, but you can see basically all those semiconductors. Okay, a lot of that is to do with the, some of the earnings and some of the price action that we saw. Okay, uh, even Netflix. Okay, in, in the kind of Mag Seven. If you look at those, they're pretty much they got a they got a bit of a hammering there. Okay, at the end of last week, that will show up when we switch across to the uh, live charts in a uh, in a moment. But there were actually you know banks and a couple of others that actually seem to to do okay uh, hence why as i said i think we're at a little bit of a uh, we're at a bit of an inflection point this week right you know we've had a couple of uh, great weeks of selling if if you like selling markets um, but equally you know the as i said we're at an inflection point and these earnings this week and next week might have an impact or a huge impact in terms of the kind of let's say the trajectory for the rest of um, the rest of q2 so um what have I put in here first? Oh, yeah. And as I said, Meta, they're, they're out on Wednesday. Um, we looked at this uh, a while back. Uh, listen, this is a weekly chart, okay? Uh, and, you know, you can see it was in a fabulous trend, okay? Fabulous uptrend, you know. Um, uh, you know, I, I tried to get across to, to new traders that, you know, don't fight good, strong trends like that. You, what you want to do is find a way to ride it, okay? And ride it to, to points where price is going to make have to make a decision. Uh, and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. It was up at five hundred dollars. Um, you know, and the 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 price auction there looks price action there looks, you know, just um, it, you know, it, 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 there's there's a battle going on there. I'd say, okay, there's a battle going on there between the bull and the bears, and you know, perhaps it, it you know, there's a, a little bit of tearing throwing a, a pivoting around that five hundred dollar level but what we've seen maybe the last couple of weeks is you know kind of what looked like you know a breakout is, is now turning into a version of an evening star um you know we will have to wait and see you know this actually got a good bump on pre-market but i think a part of that is because of what was some of the things we've just talked about but i think you know uh, everyone will be looking at the whether the earnings okay whether that basically gives us some clarity okay is there you know is this uh 
you know, are, are the numbers going to be good and stuff? And, you know, is it going to drag everybody uh, higher or do we roll over? And then, you know, then I'm looking at kind of into yeah, into that kind of 20 period moving average. And then really, you know, you're looking back to sort of big numbers, 400 up towards the, the 50 into that kind of 400, 380, if, you know, if the numbers aren't, if the numbers aren't good. So, you know, it's, uh, yeah, as I said, I think it's at an inflection point and we'll have to wait and see what, uh, what Wednesday brings us in terms of direction. All right, so that was Meta. Um, this is RTX Raytheon, um, Raytheon Technology. All right, um, you know if you uh, if you know your defense um, uh, companies, you, you might uh, understand Raytheon as they uh, they're just basically they do rockets, and in particular they do Patriots, and uh, lots of Patriots have been getting um, lobbed into the air. Okay, uh, with monotonous regularity over the uh, last year or so since they've been um, since they've been deployed to uh, to Ukraine, um, and this is more a bit of a bigger conversation. All right, they you know they they have their um, they've got their uh, earnings tomorrow, but I think as a I think I put on my Twitter feed is that you know um, after that defence bill you know kind of was sorted over the uh, the weekend, um, we have seen basically a a little bit of a, a pre market bump across all of those American defence companies there. So you know, Raytheon, uh, General Dynamics, uh, Northrop, Lockheed Martin, even Boeing. All right, even Boeing got a little bit of a bump in. You can see even uh, you can see even here, okay, in the uh, the sort of the pre market. All right, what's that? Uh, about eighty cents, okay, yeah, up, okay, and we'll see how that uh, opens up. And I think that's just probably a reflection of, on, as I said, signing in that defence bill. You know, they've done a good job there of just bailing out some of the uh, those dubious defence companies, uh, many of which have been doing well because we've covered them. Uh, one of them in particular. Boeing doing poorly. Um, we'll see whether that actually helps bail them out. But um, rating, you can see that um, you know from 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 you know you can uh, try and identify when the uh, Patriot missile was released into uh, into uh, into Ukraine. Okay, um, and that in itself, you can see the basically the kind of V-shaped bump there, inverse head and shoulders, isn't it? That um, that basically we played out there, uh, neckline there, and and away we go. Uh, and we're up here, kind of $100. You can see that this has acted as resistance in the past, all right? It's not really been able to break through it. And so with their uh, with their earnings tomorrow, I'll be interested to see, you know, does the defense bill, does the earnings have enough for it to finally break $100 or does it uh, does it fade away okay does it uh, does it fade away is there a bit of a profit take um off that off the back of that so it's at a point where it's got to make a decision at hundred dollar all right and so um you might want to watch that for the uh, for the remainder of the week yeah and as I said you know Lockheed Martin another defense company that um you know is as you can see in the pre-market okay what's that that's looking at what's that, about 80 cents as uh, as well in the pre-market um uh, you know, Lockheed Martin, the uh, the the creator and the owner of the F thirty five, along with a whole host of other uh, defense projects and uh, and stuff. So, F thirty five is a, is a bit marmite. Okay, the um, you know the the people who are paying for it don't particularly like it. The, the the lads who are flying it, okay, seem to love it and think it's you know it's a, it's a game changer. Okay, we'll talk about you know friends and contacts who are in that game and what have you. But um, either way, if you're looking at it as a share. Well, um, you know, I, I would be suggesting that, you know, here we've had this kind of level here for a while, about 470, bounced nicely off the uh, the 200 there. We had a really nice reversal there, okay? <clears throat> you know, could that be just like a bit of a cup and handle? All right, and not not the most not the most classical of uh, of patterns there, but could it be, you know, a cup and handle with the, the level being around that kind of 465 to 470 area? You know, once again, you know they're they're announcing on Wednesday. You know, could the uh, could the uh, earnings be enough to get them above four seventy? Okay, and then you're really then you're really looking about heading up towards five hundred again. You can see five hundred as actors really good resistance there in the past. But if the numbers take it, then I'll be looking at it to see. You know, does it have what it takes to to launch itself towards five hundred? So, as I said, once again, you might want to just add that to your watch list to see how that plays out this week. Okay, so let's switch across to the live charts. So if you uh, just bear with me for a moment, we'll switch across to the chart. So uh, uh, here we go, he says. Right. Um, da, 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 just... Okay. 
Okay, so I am hoping that you can still hear me. I'm hoping that you can uh, see the uh, the slides here. Okay, and uh, let's just you know here I am just on my one of my indices charts. All right, so I've got Dow on the weekly, Nasdaq on the weekly, S and P five hundred on the weekly, Russell on the weekly there, uh, along with uh, oil, DAX, Nikkei, and uh, FTSE. Okay, so um, look at that Dow. Bosch, yes, we've uh, moved down. But if you look at last week's, all right, some people might say, some people might say that's a bit of indecision. Some people might say there's, you know, there's there's a support, there's a bit of a hammer, depending upon what you're looking at there. Okay. So uh, you know, if you if you remember, oh, just hang on a second. Uh, here we go. Okay. I'm hoping that uh, everybody can see that there. Okay, thank you, Peter. All right, just getting ahead of myself, as I was saying, Dow, uh, Nasdaq, SP five hundred, Russell, FTSE one hundred, Nikkei. DAX uh, oil and uh, this Dow on the uh, on the weekly. Yep, we've had a couple of great weeks. Remember, we talked about those key reversals there. But last week there, you know, if you look at that, there's a little bit of indecision there, and that probably flips a bit to the, um, you know, the the heat map we looked at of the S and P five hundred because actually, you know, whilst there was some uh, real sell off in the tech, there was also some you know support uh, for uh, for other sectors, uh, and that's probably more reflected in terms of. Let's, let's get rid of this drawing. How we have seen uh, Nasdaq, you know, Nasdaq really did uh, move strongly down. You can see that was a real strong selling off move there. We've broken uh, all levels of price structure there. And you can see on the daily chart there, Bosch, how that went. Okay, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you know, really just effectively really strong selling there. Uh, it, as I said, it, you know, do we get a bounce? Do we get a little bit of you know a dead cat bounce? Okay, you know um, that's what I'd be looking at. And as I said, this week earnings might sort of have an have an impact on uh, you know how that takes. But it would not surprise me if we did have a uh, if we did have a little bit of a bounce. And if I just look at even for the uh, for the Fibonacci folk and stuff, I've, I've drawn that the other way around. But yeah, up to about seventeen six hundred, seventy five hundred, could we kind of uh, reverse our way back up into that? Is there a, is there kind of a little bit of relief? Um, S and P five hundred, all right. Um, say not as maybe you know a strong sell off week, but not as what we've seen in the uh, in the uh, the Nasdaq. You know, and as you can see, Fridays, all right. You know, we we held above five thousand, all right. We held above five thousand, and you can see already. Okay, you know, the electronic contract we've sort of drifted our way back up there. You know, um, we just basically, uh, as you can see, it's a bit thin, but that's what you'd expect. But, you know, I'd be looking to see well, whether we get, a, as I said, a little bit of a, a start of the week bump, whether that uh, carries us on. Uh, Russell did close beneath the 2000, but once again, there's still there's still support there, right? There is still support there. You can see on the daily chart, there's a real, real hammer, real, you know, pin bar there, okay, off the 200, all right? Is that enough to basically give a... To give a little bit of a, a dead cap bounce up to two thousand, okay, is that what we're going to see? Um, as I said, that'll uh, that'll be, I think, dictated a lot by the uh, by the earnings that we see this week. Um, you know, and Nikkei and the DAX have basically had a similar situation. Interestingly, the DAX, you know, yes, it was a bearish week, but to me, when I look at that on the weekly chart, you know, I, I look at that, it, you know, that that is also indecision there. Okay, you know, yes, it's bearish close, it's a, but um, I'd be looking at that if we look at that. There you go. Friday's chart, okay, we had just a little bit of uh, a little bit of relief, a little bit of a bounce there. And um, that's um, one of kind of my uh, um, trading tactics is payday Friday. All right. And that was a perfect payday Friday. Okay. And uh, yeah, we can see what will happen this week. Everyone's everyone's got a little bit of excited there. Look at that. You know, everyone's got a little bit of excited uh, off the back of defense aid bills, I'd, I would suggest, and uh, and lack of retaliation. Um, uh, with that, uh, oil uh, has effectively has rolled over as well. I think part of that is because um, the weekend was quiet relative compared to the last weekend or two. Okay, so that basically has had uh, that was having an impact there uh, with um, um, with oil on there. Um, if we look a bit closer to home, sterling, okay, uh, not sterling, UK one hundred, FTSE one hundred. You know, it has been bobbing around 8,000. 8,000 has offered, you know, real, um, real strong resistance there. Uh, and we, but we can see Friday, we, we pumped down to the 50 and really reversed, real bullish engulfing, bullish key reversal candle. And we can see Bosch, there we have a move up there. Now, whether that is, um, whether that's because of just sterling weakness, all right, um, you know, because we've seen that sterling, you know, falling away there, that's not really a surprise. And you can see, Today, 30-minute chart, we kind of gapped up 
and, and we've just continued to go up and up to 8,000 and beyond. Okay, so I'll be interested to see, does it get to close up there? Because the last few days, the last few times it's been up there, it's not been able to close. It's actually come back down and then rolled away. But this is a this is a bit of a stronger, that's a bit of a stronger move there. Okay, so uh, watch how that does on the 8,000. Um, looking at uh, gold, okay, uh, you know, last week was an, an inside bar on the weekly chart, bullish inside bar, okay, but there's still indecision there, okay. Uh, daily chart, you might actually even look at that as a one, two, three top there, all right. You know, and there's especially you've certainly got a lower high and it's and it's flowing through, it's following through on that, okay, in today's price action so far. But I'd be looking down here as that kind of neckline wanting to get down. I think even if it came down to 2300, you know, um, you still need to see how, how does it how does it react when it comes there. If, you know, if it bounces off it. You know, the, the buyers are back in control. If it slices through, then down to the 50, that's what I'd be looking for on uh, on gold. Um, let's have a little look at um, yeah, silver. Silver, you know, had done the same, rallied its way up. We talked about how it got up to just underneath 30, rolled over, fallen away. Okay, you can see that. Not as a, a pronounced double top one, two, three as gold, all right, but it just literally went sideways last week uh, and then has just dropped beneath $28, okay? Drop beneath it. Can it stay beneath there, all right? So last week's price action, if you look at that in the four-hour chart, you know, not exactly the most exciting there, okay? Having having just basically absolutely larped its way up there, just under 30, and now it's rolled away. And, and you know, and every time it's got to 30 on the monthly chart, every time it's got anywhere near 30, it is it has fallen away, okay? So that's the, that's the bigger picture on that. Um, right, let's look at dollar, shall we? Let's look at the dollar, and then we'll have a little look at uh, euro and sterling just to finish us off, okay? So, as always, I appreciate racing through because I'm trying to cover as much as I possibly can, give you as insight into as much as uh, as possible at the start of this on the uh, on the uh, the week. Right, here we go. Uh, dollar profile, dollar index. Um, uh, I, I probably look at us being up here into this kind of above, 106 area that's where i look at us last time we were up here did a lovely double top there with a second leg as a uh, bearish engulfing key reversal candle there we're up here again having had that fabulous week last week but you know you know not exactly the followed through that many people would have liked uh, on that but you know literally you can see above that kind of 105.75 106 uh, area and it just it's just holding above there you know um, if you look at that on the four hour chart you know, a four-hour chart, you might say, well, actually, Paul, isn't that uh, head and shoulders? And I wouldn't fight you on that, but it, it hasn't followed through. It right? hasn't followed through on that, okay? this Today, the start of this week, has been a little bit exciting in terms of, you know, a bit of dollar bullish strength. Let's wait and see how that, let's wait and see how that, uh, that holds out, okay? I think earnings will have an impact. Earnings will have an impact upon when people think what, if any, Fed rate cuts will come. We're down to people saying there might only be one or two this year. If the earnings are really poor, all right, then maybe that sort of shakes the, uh, gives the Fed a bit of a shake up and they have to change that again. Um, or if, you know, if we're still seeing signs of really strong economy, okay, really strong earnings, well, then I, I think that basically, um, yeah, it, you know, it, 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 it confirms that play that basically you might get one to two reserve cuts, okay, towards the end. But anyway, um, Dollar is still strong, and that is reflected when we look at um, some of the others. So let's look at the other side of it, euro against US dollar. Now, last week was a little bit of an indecision candle there. You know, remember what we just looked at, the, the stand is putting euro into second place. Now, normally I wouldn't, I'd normally I suggest not trading 1v2. Um, you know, you don't want to trade strength v strength. You know, I want to trade strength v weakness. Um and especially if dollar is in either the top two or the bottom two, you know, the, you have to be very aware of that. Um, and so I look at that on Euro, you know, Euro is into the second place, but I, I wouldn't exactly say that's massively bullish. Maybe we are building a base there. Maybe there is a little bit of Euro base, but I would, as I said, I wouldn't necessarily be getting hugely excited, um, hugely excited about that as the four hour chart. You know, needs to basically twenty crossing the fifty and getting above there to confirm. Maybe it, maybe it will do later this. Uh, maybe we'll do this later this week. We've got we have got some dates. We've got PMIs and stuff tomorrow, along, amongst with other things. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily be getting too excited about that. Um, well, you know, what we are looking at is you know there's dollar against Japanese yen. You know, we we went 
well, for a good while, for a couple of years at 150 being the kind of, you know, the 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 line in the sand. But, you know, we've blown through that and long gone, all right? Blown through that, blown through kind of monthly strike zones. You know, we've blown through that, okay? And that is just bang, dollar strength, yen weakness there. And um, we saw last week, I think it was, uh, yeah, early last week and stuff, Tuesday, Wednesday, sort of, you know, we saw um, what looked like attempts on um, on the... Uh, um, intervention by the japanese all right so you can probably see see it some of it there but actually you can just see it's just blowing through it not interested all right you know the the um, the yen is weak dollar strong that's you know that's the that's the story of the week um we saw as i said we saw swiss franc uh, have a you know bump from being bumped the part of the sixth if you looked at this on the price action you know that is still dollar strength but you you might be looking at that and say is that is that a bit of a hanging man there okay it's sort of showing its way up there if you look at the four hour chart you know what i was looking at here was you know where we forming at, you know an ascending triangle and uptrend yeah, and what you can see is uh, we were, and then we just blew all the way out through the other side of it okay you know we dropped our way there and you can see that so kind of sell off there right and um, yeah i'm intrigued to see does the dollar have the strength to get back up to that kind of 91.50 level? Uh, or is it going to get caught here, okay, underneath the uh, the 4 hour 50? Is that, is that going to act as a kind of um, switch from support to resistance? In which case, you know, we we uh, we, we roll away um, on that. Um, Aussie, Kiwi, they're weak against the dollar. Tell me something, you know, tell me something I didn't know. Um, all right, let's have a look at the uh, others. So uh, this is Euro. And as I said, Euro bumped its uh, way up to number two in the stand. But I don't, you know, the price action, I wouldn't exactly say is, you know, absolutely, you know, exciting me. Um, uh, you know, yes, if I look at this in the weekly charts, bang. Yes, okay, you know, the the Euro against the Aussie, okay, is still holding above the 50. Last week, Euro CAD, Close above the 50 if it's moving down there. Euro against Kiwi, okay, it, you know, it's closing up above 180. Um, uh, Euro yen, all right, it, you know, it's still bullish close, but, you know, if, if you look at that, you know, considering the yen is the weakest, uh, and if you look at that, we, you know, we've spent the last week's week at the uh, basically last, basically last year's high. I, I wouldn't exactly say the price action there is, is you know, absolutely, you know, nailed on to euro strength we, we you know we've just looked at euro against the dollar and um, even euro against swiss franc it's just been even euro against swiss franc yes it has been a great run and that's the weekly chart for 2024 yeah it's been a great run but actually you know we've talked about this look at the you know look at the the, the wicks there okay that we've been getting for the last week or two and then we kind of rolled our way over and yes we bounced back off it if we go to the daily chart but you know that price action yeah, we're holding above the we're holding above the 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 fifty. We're holding above what's that about ninety six eighty era and stuff. But uh, you know, I wouldn't necessarily be saying that looks terribly um, strong euro against the Swiss franc. Where we have seen a bit is the uh, perennial euro against the sterling. We finally, I've been talking about this for bloody well all year, thinking that we were basing, and, and finally we got a weekly move up and a close above the uh, the the fifty, even on the uh, the daily above the fifty and the two hundred. Okay, and that's following through. But once again, I think that's more to do with sterling weakness than um than basically euro strength so euro is top of the bar but I, I wouldn't exactly say it's convincing me okay that it has earned its position there anyway let's finish off by looking at uh british pound here um so you know kind of a, a intriguing morning there okay on the intraday basis you can see that let's just put these all onto the uh, uh the weekly chart to begin with. So uh, euro against sterling, we've just talked about anyway. Euro strength there, okay. Most importantly, sterling weakness. If you look at pound against US dollar, look at that. You know, last couple of weeks that has been a roll off from from being up here at one twenty nine at under the week, uh, weekly two hundred. You know, we're here we are one twenty three, okay, and bang six hundred pips there, okay, bosh. Away we go. Not a shocker, all right. Not a shocker. We said even when we're it's at the top of the pile. It was there due to others' weakness, and as the um, uh, as basically the uh, as the data has come out, what we have seen is you know sterling weakening. And as I said at the stage two calls, okay, I look at the uh, the COP reports and look at you know how that impacts that, and we can see that there has basically been you know there's been a a, a pretty big sell, pretty big sell off there, and you know in terms of the uh, um, the kind of major plays, and that is is playing out in terms of the sterling weakness, dollar strength, and you can see that you can see that beautifully. Uh, you can see how that beautifully is working there. And that's and that's you know that's following through. 
I was following through. Pound against Swiss, we talked about it. A bit like Euro against Swiss. Great trend. Fabulous trend on the weekly chart. But the last few weeks, we could see it was getting running out of steam. And then last week, look at that. Wump rolls over. Daily chart, we talked about it. You know, even though sterling was strong and Swiss franc was weak, the price action was starting to come towards the end. Okay. You know, we 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 love a nice trend. That has been a nice trend, but um as Echo and the Bunny Man sang in the 80s, nothing ever lasts forever. Uh, and that's the same with the trend. And you can see how we're rolling off there. We've switched, all right? The 20s gone from being support to being resistance. And now, you know, Friday, bang, beneath the 50 there. Right? And we're just and we're just supporting that uh, as the way goes through. Euro sterling, we've already um, uh, we have looked at. Pound yen, okay? Remember, considering yen is bottom of the pile, that's what we talked about. Bit like Swiss franc, the last few weeks has been, you know, there's just lots of wicks to the north there, right? Lots of bearish pinballs, bearish hammers there, okay? Nothing, none of that looking terribly bullish. And if you look at that, really, really since what, mid Feb, mid Feb, you know, it's just been mostly going sideways, you know, a bit of a flatters to deceive. And then if you look at April so far, you know, we're just in a tight range. And I think I can't help but think we're getting ready just to roll over and break that 50 and then drop to the 200. That's what I'll be looking at um, there. When it comes to the uh, um, the com dolls, last, you know, um, you heard me, I've been banging on about this, okay, in terms of, you know, is this a, a reverse cup and handle? All right. And so far, it's kind of looking like that, which means that, you know, we go to 190. And you can see this week that started off there, right? That's basically that's doing that. All right, it's working this way. You can see that's the four hour chart. Woof, that has been a proper sell off there, hasn't it? Beautiful, <clears throat> beautiful. If you love selling, I should add. Um, even like Kiwi, pound against Kiwi, you know, this week we can see we double top there. One, two, three, Bosch. We can see the start of this week gone. Pound against Canadian dollar. All right, it's just down to 170. You know, we just look at that on the the daily chart there was a really nice double top there okay and then we've just fallen our way to 170 and beyond so so sterling weakness is the uh is you know is the is the is the basically is the is the is the play of the day so to speak okay ladies and gentlemen um we'll end it there sorry we overran a minute or two um as always you know as i said it's, it's a race through here because i'm just trying to cover as much as i possibly can to give you just a little bit of uh insight Anyway, I hope that you found that useful. Um, just be very careful this week because there was a lot of uh, big news coming out. There's also a lot of earnings um, uh, data coming out. And there's also the kind of repercussions from um, that defence aid bill, etc. cetera. So um, uh, as I said, if you want to hear a bit more, I'll be talking about intraday reversals at two o'clock for active trades. Um, for those of you on the VTP, there'll be the stage one call tonight, the stage two call tomorrow. For the rest of you, I hope you have yourself a uh, fabulous trading week, okay? And uh, it's a uh, uh, have a great week, and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Thanks very much. Cheers, Peter. Cheers, Ola. Everybody, thanks very much. Cheers. Mm -hmm.